All right, so it's no question that as a man, it's important to keep that testosterone high, not only for building muscle in the gym, but just kind of going about your daily life as a man. And I wanted to go through my top five ways that I keep my testosterone high as a natural bodybuilder, uh, because without a doubt, the most important tool that I can use as a natural bodybuilding competitor to kind of gain an edge over the other athletes I'm competing against. So stick around to the end of the video because the fifth reason might shock you and is a little controversial. So starting with number one, it may be pretty obvious, but exercise, you know, that's the whole reason why I'm on this cardio right now. You gotta get exercise and whether it's through cardio or lifting weights in the gym, you gotta kind of form a daily habit of getting that workout in. Obviously, for me, my preferred way of exercise is through weightlifting. I've been bodybuilding for about 10 years now. So what I've noticed um, with my testosterone levels, it kind of stays the most at its peak when I'm in a daily rhythm of working out every day. And even if I'm not lifting heavy every day, I do like to try to get something in, um, whether it's like I said, through weightlifting, cardio, Stairmaster, incline treadmill like I'm doing right now. There's plenty of ways that you can get in the habit of exercise, you know, without going through this strenuous work. You know, I, I realize not everybody is trying to go to the extreme and be that bodybuilder, um, but some of you are. And if you're trying to boost that testosterone, the first thing I would do is get an exercise routine immediately. All right, the second most important thing on my list is your sleep. Now, I've had battles with my sleep and insomnia in the past, and I could definitely say that poor sleep takes a toll on just your overall life, your overall health, your mood. Um, it affects you in the gym, it affects you at work. You know, if you're not sleeping properly, it's like the, the foundation to life, you know, you need that rest. So, um, if you're going hard in the gym six to seven days a week like me, um, you might need your full eight hours. Um, you know, I really try to get as close to that eight hour mark as possible. Um, lately, it's been around seven to eight hours, so <laughs> I'm pretty happy with that. Um, if it's anything under six and you're working out hard, um, you know, you're gonna need to make the adjustment to really bump up those hours of sleep so that you get that proper recovery so that when you're in the gym the next day, it's not gonna affect your reps, your strength. Number three, your diet. So diet and nutrition are very important, obviously, to gaining that little edge on the testosterone boost. Um, what I'd recommend, you know, eating your lean meats, chicken, you know, chicken breasts, turkey breasts are good, uh, but you also need those healthy fats in there as well. So, you know, the occasional red meat, um, my personal favorite cut of steak is filet mignon and I know it could be a little pricey for some of you guys um, you know there's top sirloin is very cheap you know you're getting a lean cut of meat with you know just the right amount of fat in there you know you want those those fats you're gonna want to stay away from those saturated fats you know the vegetable oil trans fat you know you're gonna get a lot of trans fat in these processed foods that you're consuming um, but what you you do want to consume are the you know the mono unsaturated fats the polyunsaturated fats stuff that's coming from you know your steak um, even even I would go to say you know so there's some cuts of pork you know that are gonna give you those healthy fats you know avocado is a great source uh, you know, just don't over consume with the fats. You want to keep it balanced. Just make sure you're getting in that proper proper protein to fat ratio um, And everybody's different things to eliminate in the diet would be you know your excess sugar um, Stuff like that's gonna spike your insulin. You know, you don't want to have that throughout the day You know a little bit here and there is fine um, But limiting sugar is also another way that I've seen to help keep my testosterone levels high um, You know, I don't always want to rely on that, that sugar. Sometimes the best time to consume the sugar if you are going to have it is uh, immediately post-workout. Sometimes those simple carbs are good for restoring the muscle glycogen, but other than that, you know, you kinda wanna stay away from the bulk of the sugars and processed foods. All right, number four on the list is supplementation. So, so supplementation within itself is a little tricky. I mean, you only really want to supplement with what you're deficient in. 
um, but there are some herbs that have given me an edge that I use that are you know legal supplements um, when it comes to WADA testing which all of the athletes in natural bodybuilding are tested for. Two things as far as supplements that you might not be too familiar with are Tonkat Ali and Ashwagandha. These two supplements uh, have kind of been proven to raise those testosterone levels when used consecutively for a period of time. Now, I wouldn't recommend using these long-term. Um, you know, you should cycle off these things, give your body, give your organs a cleanse. For me, I'll run a, an ashwagandha and tonka ali for about two months, you know, take a few weeks off, get back on it if I feel like I need the little boost. Um, but they are, you know, herbs, so they might not work with everybody. Um, so you just kind of have to try things out and see what works for you. Another thing that isn't directly correlated with the testosterone levels, but with the muscle gain is creatine. Um, you know, if you're not somebody that likes to eat red meat or you're not getting enough creatine in through your diet, I'd recommend supplementing it with a, about five grams a day is about optimal for, you know, a normal guy. As far as anything synthetic, I would not recommend you put it into your body. Um, whether you're bodybuilding or not, especially if you're young, you know, you're in your teens, you're in your early 20s, you know, you want to stay natural as long as possible, you know, because it's, it, it's really going to affect you later down the road. You don't want to chase after what you see, you know, online. You, you're seeing a little bit of steroid abuse um, from certain people and, you know, those are the things that you kind of want to stay away. So it's one of the whole reasons of me making this video is that there are ways to keep your natural testosterone levels high and you don't need to resort to taking the synthetics and the anabolics to you know achieve your desired look and that kind of leads me into number five which might be a little controversial for some of you guys uh, but it's the fapping you know gentlemen you gotta quit the fapping like you know it affects your mood if you're somebody that you know is spending a lot of time you know you guys are going to realize that over time these benefits could be pretty game changing and you know might give you that extra one to two percent edge over your other competitors or just anybody else you know you don't want to strive to be the average because i will tell you the average man is probably you know busting on himself once a day and if you can hold in that seed and just kind of have that mental clarity that focus to you know get after the grind and the shit that really matters then you know you're gonna be cold and you know having that cold mindset in the gym and, and in life is very important you know you know you, you you have to be you have to be cold you know I could I, I have a laundry list of of just successful men that are cold you know starting from Arnold Schwarzenegger back in the day that can have a negative effect on my mind and therefore destroy my workout. So therefore I have to cut my emotions off and be kind of cold in a way when before competition. You know, the guys like Michael Jordan and Tom Brady and I'm, I'm sure, you know, they had the same mindset when it came to, you know, putting that energy into the shit that really matters and not into stuff that's just going to make you feel unfulfilled in life. If NoFap's something that you thought about doing in the past and you feel like, you know, you really don't have that mental toughness or that discipline to really get yourself on a, going on a good streak, you know, I would recommend censoring some of the things that you see on social media. And for me, I went clean off social media for 90 days and it was one of the best decisions I've ever made. You know, there's a lot of triggers on social media that might lead you from one site to the next. And, you know, a lot of these a lot of these pages, these IG models, professional hot chicks, whatever you want to call them, could be, you know, triggering for some of you guys to, uh, you know, it's like it flips a switch in your brain and it's kind of, you know, takes you away from the things you're motivated from and kind of drags you into that, that death scrolling loop. And, and for me, getting rid of social media for three months was a huge game changer. And I explain how I did it and how it affected me. And if you want to find out how, click the video right here.